Finally, good to see you. The only UK diaspora in Ghana who is into fish farming. I mean, your people are telling me that if I don't feature you on the channel, they're going to be mad at me. <laughs> so I have to come and look for you. You're, you're almost 26 kilometers away from Accra. <laughs> it's not far. <laughs> it's far. <laughs> but I have to come. Good. Anyway, good, good, good to see you. My name is Maya, yeah. and you have to tell me your name. I don't even know your name. Kwame Adadi. They were all calling you Mr. Fish Farmer. Uh, yes, so yes, I yes. I'm also calling you Fish Farmer, Fish Farmer. But oh. your name is Kwame? Yes. Kwame, your accent doesn't sound like a Ghanaian. I'm going here. <laughs> born and raised in Ghana? Um, no, no, born in the UK. Huh? Two years in Ghana. Uh, I went to um, Dodoa, uh, boarding school, and okay. I think Association International. So I've done a year, year and a half. So I've been in Ghana for previously about two and a half years. And prior to this, I've been now been here five years. Wow. So I've pretty much relocated to Ghana. So born and raised in the UK by a Ghanaian family? Uh, yes. That's interesting. Kwame, yeah. I mean, you are here right now yeah. into fish farming, yeah. but let me know, what were you doing in the UK? IT. IT, oh, wow. banking security, um, all sorts of IT. Um, you know, the, the family set up uh, uh, a telecoms company. You know, there's five in the family. And so we're operating. It was, it was going well. Things were good. So, you know, we started having a little itch. Well, just start getting a bit bored in the UK. What are you saying? <laughs> Got bored in the UK? No, the pounds are not too much. I mean, like with pounds, I'll be smiling all day. Oh, even with the pounds, it still gets boring. <laughs> work, come home, TV, sleep, work, come home, TV, sleep. It was like the same routine. Same routine, yes. So you got bored with that? I got bored with that. And you decided to relocate to Ghana? Yes, I mean, it was, my dad's obviously Ghanaian. Uh, we was, I've been looking at Ghana for a while, so I was coming to join him anyway. So we were just getting in, just getting into that feel. Unfortunately, he died, you know. Yeah, he's so resting perfect. No problem, no problem, thank you. And um, you came to Ghana. What are you doing in Ghana at the very moment? Uh, when I first, oh, okay, when we first came to Ghana, we started the fish farming. Well, well dad started the fish farming, so we kind of like just took over. So I looked at what he was doing. Um, we were here for about a good year and a half doing the fish farm. And then we decided, you know, let's spend a bit of money. Let's, let's expand and let's see where we go from here. Mm. So five years later, this is where we are. That's beautiful, man. So your father started this one. I can see this should be the first one. Yes. <laughs> Dad started this one. Okay. The square tanks. It was okay, but it was very, very, very labor intensive. You know, we were scrubbing, cleaning, trying to get the waste out of the water. It was extremely hard. So we built these two and uh, this one. So we used these for about, I think about six, eight months. It was a lot of work, you lot know, work. a lot of work. So we went to the drawing boards and then we decided to do the round ones. The, the concept was that if we built a round one, if we then swirl the water around, we could get the waste into the center and then drain it out. Mm. So this kind of like worked. Uh, well, it worked extremely well. Um, we had about 5,000 tilapia in here. Uh, we just decided to do other stuff. Uh, we got a few issues with the 5,000 tilapia. Mm. We then roofed it. Once we roofed it, the fish are using all the water. Uh, we were using drum filters. So it worked well for two years. Uh, what we found again out uh, was that the, uh, the food, feeding the tilapia was quite expensive. So this side of the farm is quite automated. We have um, drum filters, pump water from inside here into the drum filter. It cleans it, spits the clean water, spits the dirty water out and the clean water comes back in. So again, we can put about 5,000 tilapia in here. Wow, 5,000? 5, 5,000, yeah. But I think you are doing more of a computerized I mean, fish farming. Yes. What we found, or one of the issues that we had was that, um, you know, someone might put a borehole on and forget about the borehole and walk away. And a few hours later or, next, you know, a couple of weeks later, we find that the borehole has gone down. So what we done was that we put, so we computerized everything. Uh, we put microcontrollers, uh, we put a mini computers dotted around the farm. And uh, you can only turn a, you know, you might turn a borehole on, um, but an hour later it would turn it off. We had automated pumping, so we had three wells. 
and two boreholes and we could pump up and down and select which well had water in it and so this was all automated. But isn't it expensive to operate this kind of fish farming in Ghana? This is extremely expensive. This is more European type design where you've got electric and the electric's reasonable and you know it's it's quite hard you know hence the reason why we went uh, decided to build the other farm which is a bit more conventional. Would love to go and see that one is that okay? Sure no problem. The computerized site, this is now the traditional method, the traditional way of doing something. <laughs> this one saves a lot of money, yeah? This one saves a lot of money. No solar, no air pumps, no <laughs> water cleaning. Ah, is this uh, man-made? <laughs> this is man-made. Wow. Uh, this was originally was floodland. Okay. So we started digging it out uh, to do some fish farms, to do some um, traditional farms here. As we were digging it out, Water was filling up, um, water was filling up. Um, then we said, well, no, let's just, let's do a big one. So we thought, well, let's do a small little pond, small little dam. They thought, no, let's do a big one. So we started digging and we just got carried away and here we go. So this is actually about three or four meters deep. You know, um, while we we're digging it, it was filling up with water. We did not know if it would fill up with water and actually it did. It filled up with water. It's pretty much brought down the water table for the whole area. This place used to be quite flooded. Um, so yeah, we've done kind of like fixed two birds with one stone. You know, we've sorted out the flooding and we've also got a place and to I do the fish. The fish has got 24 hours security. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you need it here. Security. I just wanted to know, is this your first project that you ventured into when you came to Ghana? No, and I think initially we were starting to build, well the idea was to build some sort of educational centre, some sort of school, some sort of college. So we did start a year and a half ago and the idea was to bring computers, my background's computing obviously, so I know, you know, and one of the, one of the things I wanted to do was, you know, take some of the input from, from what I've learnt and bring it back into Ghana. So computing, technical drawing, you know, that sort of stuff. So an academy, which is what we want to do. So that's my primary focus. So all this is pretty much going to get ploughed back into the school. Free. <laughs> Free. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's the dream. Yeah. All right. Now let's talk about you living in the UK and sure. now you're back here in Ghana. Yeah. What are some of the similarities between life in the UK and life in Ghana? Similarities, well, I wouldn't say similarities. It's, um, the struggle's the same. If you're living in the UK, and, you know, I, I, I build in the UK, as well as the, the, the IT stuff I do, I also do building. And um, it's, in terms of, it's a struggle because it's expensive. You know, you have to, you know, you have to purchase right, you have to get the right bills. You know, it's, it's easier, but you're still struggling. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it's easier, but you're still struggling. You're trying to say, like, uh, everything is there, so which um, means your life is kind of comfortable. Yeah. But you're still struggling. You still too. struggle. You still and struggle. Are you struggling in Ghana, too? In Ghana, I think I do struggle. <laughs> <but> <laughs> <the> <laughs> let, let, let us know the struggle in Ghana. I mean, I'm in for it. Like, what, what's the struggle in Ghana? I, I think, you know, uh, the struggle is vehicles breaking down all the time you know it's just every day is kind of like slightly different you know the weather causes issues okay i've cheated what that's actually it? automated it's the fish feeder oh, okay. so, oh wow that's, so, that's the only automation i do here oh. it's just the fish feeding oh, feeding the fish feeding the fish automatically yeah so no one really oh. comes here um so back to the question struggling here in, in ghana okay security for instance is a struggle you know if the place is not secure to come back here and the place is empty so it's it's a it's a less stressful struggle is that less stressful or is it more stressful i don't know you decide 
There is a struggle. You decide. And um, <laughs> you've been in Ghana for five years now. Yes, I've been in Ghana for and five years. I know you definitely have fellow brothers and sisters living in the diaspora, yeah? Yeah. Do you think it's worth it to live in Ghana? The weather, the people, yes, I would still come here and I would do it all again. You know, my only shame was, you know, I probably could have come here maybe two, three years early, earlier. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't dream of doing owning a fish farm in the UK. It's just, it wouldn't happen. I don't know why it wouldn't happen, but in Ghana you can do that. In Ghana you can be whatever you want to be. It's like a, 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 a dad talking to his children. You can, you can be whatever you want to be in Ghana, which is true. You know, but you can't, in terms of, you know, you need some background, obviously in what, whatever you're doing, whatever you do, whether in your UK, you're in Ghana, you always need a bit of background, but you can do stuff here. You can make a difference here. You can make a difference here. So yeah. which means that you have something or kind of advice for fellow brothers and sisters who are looking forward to relocate to Ghana. Yes. If you should advise people like that, what will your message be? Look, um, message would probably be, um, if you want to come, mm -hmm. you know, you can come, initially come. Have a look around, stay for a month, see what's going on. Um, speak to, connect with others, you know, me, uh, connect with others. You know, let them explain to you what they're doing, how they're doing stuff. And, you know, once you've got a feel of the place and you're reasonably happy you can live here, because it's, it's not easy living here, but it's still worth coming here. It's still worth doing stuff here. And um, do you believe that Africa is the future? England, I believe, is pretty much dead. It's, yeah, Ghana's where it's happening. Yeah, Ghana's where it's happening. Too much competition in the UK. There's a thousand and one people trying to do the same thing that you're doing. You know, you're just a number. Here you can be, you know, you can do stuff. You can achieve stuff. You can achieve dreams. It's not, it's not about money here. It's about quality of life. You know, I have a quality of life here. You know, UK is, I think, just watching these standards and sleeping. That's all I seem to do. But here, I get up when I want, I work when I want. It's easier, you know. I mean, so do you think that if you're coming to Africa, it's worth it doing a corporate job or being an entrepreneur in Africa? Entrepreneur, definitely. You can be. Um, this is, I mean, I don't really put a lot of time and effort into this, but this is, this is a, a successful business. You know, um, um, this is a successful business. Okay. It's... Um, it's easy. And how many jobs have you created so far? Uh, in terms of jobs, uh, we have about four, we have four people working for us. So four people in their families. You know, when the school opens up, we'll have a lot more teachers. Um, it's going to generate income for the village. And I just want to say that keep up the good work. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. And thank you so much for talking to me. No problem. Thank you. Time. Great one. So, so boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, and I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing episode. If today is your first time seeing this face on your screen, please do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. I'm going to see you in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out.